Blacklight Retribution is a free-to-play, first-person shooter. It takes place in a, in a universe that's sort of uh, dystopian, dilapidated, maybe 20, 30 years out in the future. We wanted to try to, to make a world that would be believable, even though it did have mech suits and rail guns and, you know, giant weapons to kill your friends with. We wanted to make a fast-paced, very highly customizable first-person shooter. One of its biggest sort of iconic things is this customization. You can customize your entire gun. You can change out your stock, your magazine, your barrel, muzzle, scope, tons and tons of weapon permutations and everything that caters to uh, that type of player that wants to min-max things and sort of like, uh, you know, create that alchemy of, of his weapon. We wanted to allow you to make and tune that gun towards yourself. And as we moved into Blacklight Retribution, we allowed you to define your entire character. So not only just how you look, but also how you play. What we wanted to do when we first started talking about Retribution was allow uh, a medic class not just to have an assault rifle. If you are a medic, you can have a heavy machine gun, or you could be a sniper, or you can be an X or Y or Z. We want the player to define their play experience and their play style, not us. In the digital free-to-play world, there's a lot of interaction with the community. You know, we're constantly updating it, we're constantly patching it. You put out a, a, a mainstream title, and it comes out, there's a DLC for X years, and then the second one that comes out, nobody usually keeps on playing. With a free-to-play, it's the same game, and it just evolves. It's all about the players. It's all about the fans getting in, exploring, or finding it for the first time and playing. We want to allow people to explore or find it. And so new players can come in or they can try it a year before and as they come back in, they play it again. It's completely different. It's constantly changing. And it's really up to us and it's really up to the developer to want to change and to want to kind of have that ebb and flow of, of development. With Sony actively recruiting us and listening to our feedback, then there's an actual opportunity there to get in and help uh, establish the protocols and, and the way things are gonna be done for the platform that will make it even more successful in the future from our perspective. So whether that be the patching process or the way the distribution process is handled, the forging those protocols, like how do we, how do you do, you know, the, the free-to-play component? Um, where does that put you in the store, et cetera, et cetera. So the, the systems that they're building and the software that's going to exist on the platform is going to be accommodating of um, ideally everybody. Last, last console, a game like Blacklight Retribution would have never been an indie game on, on this type of platform. It would have had to be something more artistic and artsy and not have guns and grenades and a, a, a dubstep, you know, mini track. You know, that's the thing. That's why it's so cool that anyone can come to, to this group now and say, I've got an amazing idea, but I can do it. That's the thing, we want to make our games become so much better and Sony's really allowing us as independent developers to really make that, that, that system, that, that game that's gonna be really amazing and it's gonna allow the gamers to experience the thing that the devs wanted to make versus what they had to make.